Hi, this will be your discussion on retinal detachment. So your retinal detachment is characterized by the separation of the two layers of your retina. Plus, your retinal detachment is among the ophthalmic emergencies. Okay, this is commonly characterized by a patient presenting in the ER and they would complain that it's as if a curtain was dropped in front of them. Okay, because of a sudden detachment of the retina, there is impairment on part of the visual field. It would make them feel that a curtain would, was dropped in front of their eyes. Okay, so etiology. This could be a result of accumulation of fluids. This could also be a result of contraction of the vitreous body. Once the vitreous class would contract, it will lead to traction. So when I, tra when I say traction, I mean there would be a pulling force towards your retina. This pulling force would lead to the separation of the layers of your retina, which would create a subretinal space. And then because of that, this space would become fluid filled. Your retinal detachment is common among patients who are age 50 to 70. Now, there are different types of your retinal detachment. But prior to that, let's look at this diagram. Okay, and then try to realize what are the two layers of your retina. So there are two primary layers. One is your RPE and then the other one is your sensory retina. Okay, so class, when I talk about your RPE, your RPE is the retinal pigment epithelium. Or other texts would refer to it as your melanin epithelial pigment. So your melanin epithelial pigment could be found on this part. Okay? So could be found on this part. Whereas your sensory retina, the one here in pink class, okay, is where the rods and the cones could be found. So what happens in retinal detachment? The sensory retina would pull away from the RPE and then fluids is building up between the two layers. Okay, so there could be several reasons. There's, there could be a leak here on this part of the retina. There could be an increase in the pulling force or traction from this part in such a way that fluids would be depositing there. Okay, so again, the two layers are your RPE and then your sensory retina. Now, there are several types of your retinal detachment. So you have your regmetogenous detachment, you have your tension detachment, and then you have your exudative retinal detachment. Let's first talk about your regmatogenous detachment. When I say regmatogenous detachment, this is the most common form. What happens here is that a hole or a tear develops in the sensory retina. Okay? There is a tear in the sensory retina allowing for the liquid vitreous to seep through the sensory retina and detach it from the RPE. Okay? If you would look at this little diagram here on the side, this would show a regmatogenous detachment. As you can see, class, no? there is a tear, there is a hole here, and the vitreous humor fluid here is going into your retina. And because of that, your sensory retina is being pulled away from your RPE. Okay? So, risk. This is a, the risk there is a high among your patients with uh, myopia and among your patients with aphakia okay, or aphakia because of the absence of the natural lens after your cataract surgery. Okay, so 5% or 10% of all of your regmatogenous detachment is actually associated with your proliferative retinopathy. And your proliferative retinopathy is also associated with your diabetic neurovascularization. Then you have your tension retinal detachment. When I say tension retinal detachment, you hear the word tension, think of a pulling force. Okay, so there is a pulling force and the pulling force could be coming from the vitreous humor or the vitreous space. Okay, so if you are the ophthalmologist examining this patient, you need to ensure that you are able to break and identify and release the scars or bands of fibrous material that provide traction on the retina. Okay, because this is the fibrous material. What happens, class, no? So maybe the patient is post-op. And that a patient with a fibrous material, um, the fibrous material class or the bands of fibrous scar tissue will be able to pull parts of the retina. Okay, that's why it's causing your tension detachment. It's common in DM retinopathy, even your vitreous hemorrhage, okay, and then the retinopathy of prematurity. Then you have your exudative retinal detachment. So class, as the term implies exudative, meaning there is involvement of exudates. There is a production of serous fluids under the retina. Okay, so exudates. It could be class characterized by the presence of infection. So your exudative retinal detachment is common among your patient with uveitis, meaning inflammation of the uvea, infection of your uvea, and then your macular degeneration. So recall that your uvea is also your vitreous humor. Now, assessment findings. 
your patient will have visual floaters, light flashes, and then gradual painless visual loss or vision loss. Visual floaters. The floating spots class or opacities before the eyes are caused by the blood and retinal cells that cast the shadow to the retina. The light flashes, on the other hand, are caused by the light entering the eye, which is not absorbed by the detached melanin epithelial pigment. Okay, so it is not absorbed because of the detached melanin epithelial pigment. And the gradual painless vision loss would be described class as a, cur a curtain drawn before their eyes. And this is due to the progressive constriction of vision in one eye. Again, that will be a sensation that a curtain has been drawn before the eyes or as if one is looking over the fence. Okay? Meaning, class may ara blank or there is a blank space or a black space on the visual field of your patient which suddenly occurred. Okay? And there is no traumatic injury. Now, what's the management for this patient? I've told you earlier that your retinal detachment is actually considered to be an ophthalmic emergency. Why? If this one is not addressed, your patient would have irreversible blindness. So your managements for this patient, your management for this patient would involve bed rest. You need to cover the eye of the patient to decrease the stress on the eye of the patient. Okay, so bilateral eye patch may be done. And then you need to position the head so that the retina hole is in the lowest part of the eye. Okay, again, the hole should be in the lowest part of the eye. What's the purpose? Why is it placed on the lowest part of the eye? It is considered to be the dependent position. And the dependent position class is encouraged in such a way that it will not increase the damage already to your retina. Okay, so that to prevent further damage to your retina. And then surgery is done as soon as possible. And the surgery of choice for this one is what we refer to as your scleral buckling. Okay, scleral buckling procedure. Okay, so let's talk about the surgeries. Scleral buckling, you have your vitrectomy, cryotherapy, or cryopexy, and then you have your laser photocoagulation. Scleral buckle. In scleral buckling class, the retinal surgeon would compress the sclera, and often class that is using your scleral buckle. That's why it's referred to as your scleral buckling procedure. Sometimes they use a silicone band. The purpose of which class is to invent the scleral wall from the outside of the eye and bring the two retinal layers in contact with each other. Okay, so class again, it's as if class it's compressing the sclera to ensure class that the two layers would be in contact with one another. Okay, so it's like a little pressure placed on the sclera so that the two layers of your retina will again be contact with one another. Scleral buckling. Next, you have your vitrectomy. So, class in vitrectomy, that involves removal of some or all part of the vitreous humor. As the term implies, vitrectomy. Okay? So, class, your vitrectomy is an intraocular procedure that would involve an introduction of a light source through an incision. So, there is a light source introduced through an incision, and then uh, which would act also as a portal for the vitrectomy instrument. Okay? Again, there would be two incisions. Okay? One is... Uh, for the light source and then second will be for the vitrectomy instrument. So in this procedure class, the surgeon would dissect the preretinal membranes under direct visualization while the retina is stabilized by an intraoperative vitreous substitute. Okay, so it's trying to stabilize using a substitute. And the traction on the retina class is relieved through the vitrectomy and combined with scleral buckling to repair your retinal detachment. Okay, so for example, earlier we've talked about traction, traction retinal detachment. So one way to remove the traction class or the um, the traction, yeah, on the retina will be using your vitrectomy. And then after the procedure or once a part of the vitreous humor was already removed, a gas bubble, a silicon oil, or a perfluorocarbon and liquid could be injected to the vitreous cavity. And the purpose of this is to push the sensory retina up against the RPE. Okay, so class, for example, now look at this image on the left. If your patient have had a vitrectomy, and then class, your patient had a retinal tear in this part of the eye, what would happen, class, is that the gas bubble should be able to compress that part of the eye. Okay, the purpose of that class is for you to ensure that there is a attachment of the two layers of your retina. Okay, now. You need to position your patients properly to ensure that the gas bubble would be elevated for it to offer the benefit that it needs to, okay, which is to ensure 
which is to ensure that the gas is compressing on the part of the retina okay, where, where the detachment occurred. After this procedure, you can still do your argon laser photocoagulation and then you also have your cryotherapy. So either of these procedures is used class to ensure that the retina is in place. Okay, this would ensure that the retina is in place. That's vitrectomy. Then you have your, uh, so again, this is a scleral buckling class now. Um, in this uh, procedure, we are just showing how, how the scleral buckle is placed against the outer surface of the eye and soon into the eye to keep it in place. So the purpose of the buckle is to push the sclera towards the middle of the eye to relieve the pull on the retina and allow the tear, or the tear I mean, to settle against the wall of the eye. Okay, so your cryopexy, cryo, extreme cold, okay, or your light or your laser photocoagulation is expected to scar the area around the tear, the tear I mean, and hold it in place until a seal would form between the retina and the layer beneath it. So basically, their purpose is scarring to facilitate the sealing of the two layers of your retina. Okay, so that's the purpose of your cryopexy and laser photocoagulation. Okay, post-op care for a patient with retinal detachment. You need to observe eye patch for any drainage. Okay, if there is any drainage, you may suspect that there might be leakage. There might be bleeding. Activity restrictions may be necessary. Just the same as our post-op general care for eye surgeries. Avoid rigorous and vigorous activities. The position, usually the head is down and to one side and that is maintained for several days post-op. Okay, narcotics may be needed okay, during the first 24 hours. And then IV acetazolamide is given to this patient. Acetazolamide class is a diuretic. No? Common example of which is your diamox. Then you have your warm or cold compress which may be applied for comfort for several days. Okay. What are the possible nursing diagnoses for this patient? So altered tissue perfusion, in this case class, that will be the retinal because remember, there is detachment of a part of your retina. There is anxiety on the part of your patient. Imagine half of your visual field, okay, in the right or the left, they would have or not be able to see things as if a curtain covered it. It will make your patient anxious. Then sensory perceptual alteration, visual, and then of course risk for injury. As long as we are dealing with visual problems, the risk for injury will be very high for your patients. Okay? Then, the next disorder that we have is your age-related macular degeneration. Okay? Macula, it's the loss of your central vision, usually a disease of the aging retina. So when I talk about your macula class, your macula recall it as the central area of your retina. And when I say retina, this is the light-sensitive tissue which would line inside of our eye. So your macula is actually the functional center of your retina. It would give us the ability to see 2020. It would provide us the best color vision responsible for sharp, detailed central vision, also called our visual acuity. Okay? Now, when your macula lutea or your fovea, so, class, your macula lutea or fovea is an area wherein there is very high concentration of cones, light-sensitive cells in the retina that would give detailed central vision. So, again, class, it would give detailed central vision. In other words, if your patients would have a problem with your fovea, your macula, your patients would have a problem with central vision. That's why macular degeneration is characterized by a problem on central vision. Now, there are several types of your macular degeneration. Okay, so we have your wet type and then your dry type. Class for the wet type, the wet type is usually referred to as exudative. Okay, so exudative uh, macular degeneration is characterized by the sudden growth of new vessels. These new vessels class tends to be fragile. And because of the fragility of these new vessels, it would leak blood and fluid. And because of that, it will displace macula and interfere with blood supply. Because of that class, it would lead to damage, it would lead to scarring, and then there will be a macula function problem. In the dry type, the dry type is actually referred to as non-exudative. It's the most common type, and it is caused by degeneration. Okay? Unlike in your wet type, your wet type is caused by neovascularization, whereas in your dry type, it is caused by degeneration. Okay? So class, there will be scattered yellowish round spots. These spots are referred to as drusen they begin to appear in the macular region of the retina. Now, they would slowly atrophy, 
there will be slow atrophy of your choroid, pigment, epithelium, and retina in the macular region. Okay, and because of this atrophy, the signs and symptoms of your macular degeneration. Assessment. There will be distortion of straight lines. There will be dark or blind spot. Central vision problem. There will be intermittent blurring of central vision and gradually worsening over time. But the peripheral vision is normal. Peripheral vision is normal. What's the management? Give steroids to this patient, vitamins to this patient, and circulatory agents. Okay, with the hope to increase the blood supply. Then you give your dietary intake of antioxidants. Laser surgery is done to seal the leaking blood vessels in a near, in or near the macula that can limit the extent of damage. The aim of this is to help the client maximize the remaining vision. Okay, now, ask yourselves and try to search, is there really a cure for macular degeneration? Okay, be prepared to answer that in your live discussion. Then, your alternative strategies, the use of large print books, and probably the use of your public transportation. It would be better than them uh, than for them to do private okay, or individualized transportation. Nursing diagnosis for this patient could either be sensory perceptual alteration, risk for injury, which is actually high, and then ineffective individual coping. Our next topic will be focused on glaucoma. Thank you very much for your attention.